Subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon to never miss an update from Endeavor Careers. Hello and welcome to Endeavor's GK Capsule for the month of March 2021. This has been a busy month in foreign policy and international relations with high-profile visits to India from the United States and Russia and also the first summit of Quad countries to counter China. March has also been the month of many awards. Let us look at these and other highlights of the month. The first category is Awards and Recognitions. The Union Culture Ministry of India has announced the winners of the Gandhi Peace Prizes for the years 2019 and 2020. The Gandhi Peace Prize for 2020 was conferred on the father of nation of Bangladesh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Sultan Qaboos bin Said Al Said of Oman was awarded the Gandhi Peace Prize for the year 2019. The Gandhi Peace Prize is an annual award presented by Government of India since 1995. This award is open to all people regardless of their nationality. The jury for Gandhi Peace Prize is chaired by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and comprises of the Chief Justice of India and Leader of Opposition in the Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla and founder of Sulab International Bindeshwar Pathak were also a part of the jury this year. The jury unanimously decided to select Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and Oman's late ruler Sultan Qaboos for the Gandhi Peace Prize for the year 2020 and 2019 respectively. Renowned Hindi writer Professor Sharad Pagare has been selected for the prestigious Vyas Samman 2020. The Vyas Samman is given by the KK Birla Foundation for outstanding work in Hindi literature. Professor Pagare is awarded for his novel Partly Putra Ki Samagri. Professor Sharad Pagare is one of the well-known writers of Hindi literature and is regarded as one of the distinguished researchers, professors and scholars of the historical past. He has published six story collections and five novels so far. His work has been translated into various regional languages of India. The 67th National Film Awards for the Best Films in 2019 were finally announced on 22nd March. The award ceremony was originally scheduled in May 2020, but it was delayed by a year due to the coronavirus pandemic. The awards are announced by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Veteran writer-director N. Chandra was the chairman of the jury which decided the winners. The Best Actor Award was shared between Manoj Vajpayee for the Hindi film Bhosle and Dhanush for Tamil film Asuran. Kangna Ranaut won the Best Actress Award for her films Mani Karnika and Panga. Malayalam film Marakkar won the Best Film Award and Sushant Singh Rajput's Chichore won the award for Best Film in Hindi. Sanjay Puran Singh Chauhan won the award for Best Director for his Hindi movie Bahattar Hure. Sikkim was declared as the most film-friendly state. You can check out the complete list of winners in the pinned comment below this video. The 63rd Grammy Awards were held at Los Angeles on 14th March. The ceremony was hosted by Trevor Noha. The ceremony was originally scheduled for 31st January but was delayed due to the pandemic. Beyonce created Grammy history by breaking the record for most wins by a female artist. Beyonce picked up four awards this year, taking her total number to 27 Grammys. Taylor Swift became the first woman to win the Album of the Year award, three times after winning the honor for her album Folklore. I Can't Breathe by Dernst Emily won Song of the Year award. Let us now look at major highlights in the category of national news. In its meeting on 23rd March, the Union Cabinet approved COVID-19 vaccination for everyone above 45 years of age, starting from 1st April. The move comes as India enters the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic, with cases rising once again. India is experiencing more than 1 lakh daily cases in the second wave. Maharashtra, Punjab, Kerala, Karnataka, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh are the six states worst affected in this round. The government said that the decision to allow vaccination above 45 years of age will help millions of people. The government, however, did not comment on those below 45 years of age and by when will they be allowed vaccination. Meanwhile, the news of vaccine shortage has started appearing from different states. The government has assured adequate supply of vaccination to all eligible beneficiaries. 
The Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Act 2021 received approval from President of India. The bill was recently passed by both the houses of the parliament. The latest bill amends the earlier act of 1991 and provides a framework for the functioning of the government of Delhi and its legislative assembly. The new act accords primacy to Delhi's lieutenant governor over the elected government. In fact, according to the new law, the word government in Delhi now means the lieutenant governor and the chief minister will now have to seek the opinion of the LG before taking any executive action. The act basically gives more power to the LG of Delhi and reduced the power of the elected government. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal was hugely disappointed with the bill and termed it as a sad day for democracy. The Finance Ministry on 30th March approved the issuance of 16th trench of electoral bonds. The bonds will be open for sale from 1st to 10th April. The decision from Finance Ministry came in the middle of the election season going on in West Bengal, Assam, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry. The phase-wise elections are going on in these states and the results will be announced on 2nd May. In a related development, the Supreme Court refused to stay the issuance of electoral bonds. These bonds are interest-free bonds used to donate money to political parties. The scheme was announced in Union Budget 2017. The bonds are sold in multiples of Rs 1000, Rs 10,000, 1 lakh, 10 lakh and 1 crore and the State Bank of India is the only bank authorized to sell them. These bonds can be purchased by any citizen or corporation registered in India. Donors can purchase and subsequently donate these bonds to the political party of their choice. As the bonds do not carry any information about the buyer, the electoral bond scheme was challenged in the court for promoting anonymity and non-transparency in political funding. The court has yet to make a final decision in this matter. The Governor of Haryana, Satyadev Narayan Arya, has given his approval to the bill providing 75% reservation in the private sector jobs to the locals holding states' domicile. The Legislative Assembly of Haryana has already passed the bill in November last year. The Haryana State Employment of Local Candidates Act 2020 provides quota for local people in private sector jobs that offer a salary of less than Rs 50,000 a month. The law defines local candidates as those domiciled in the state. For the domicile status, a person should be born in Haryana or have lived there for at least 15 years. The bill covers private companies, societies, trusts and partnership firms in Haryana. It provides for training to eligible local candidates when qualified people are not available. Giving 75% reservation in private sector jobs was a key poll promised by Dushyan Chautala's Jan Nayak Janta Party, which is BJP's coalition partner in the state. Let us now look at major highlights in the category of international news. In a display of multilateral cooperation, the leaders of four countries, India, US, Japan and Australia, met for the first ever Quad Summit on 12th March. The aim of the meeting was to counter China's growing influence in Indo-Pacific region. The virtual meeting was attended by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, US President Joe Biden, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga. The Quad is an alliance of four countries established in 2007. It is viewed as a counterbalance to China's military and economic dominance in the Indo-Pacific region. The group failed to take off initially due to hesitation among the members and objections by China. However, the challenges posed by an aggressive China triggered a revival of the Quad Alliance in 2017. Since then, Quad has taken several steps to bolster military and strategic ties among the member countries. The current meeting of Quad comes at a time when all four countries have either trade or security disputes with China. The first Quad summit was held in the backdrop of an ongoing military disengagement between India and China following border standoff in Ladakh. Two high-profile visits were made to India in this month. One was US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and the second was Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The United States Defense Secretary, General Austin, came to India on a three-day visit on 19th March. He became the first top-level official of the newly elected Joe Biden government to visit India. Lloyd Austin met with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi 
Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and National Security Adviser Ajit Doval. The visit is aimed at boosting bilateral defence and security relations in the wake of growing Chinese activities in the Indo-Pacific region. The visit by American Defence Secretary to India was followed by the visit of Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in the first week of April. He held a meeting with Indian Foreign Minister S. Jai Shankar. The two ministers discussed regional and international issues of mutual interest. An important topic of discussion was Afghan peace process. Sergei Lavrov also held a brief meeting with John Kerry in New Delhi. John Kerry is the US Special Presidential Envoy on Climate. He was also visiting India at the same time for a separate bilateral meeting. In his first foreign visit after the COVID-19 outbreak, Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Bangladesh on 26th March. Prime Minister Modi attended the Golden Jubilee celebration of Bangladeshi independence. The Bangladeshi National Day celebration also commemorated the birth centenary of the father of the nation of Bangladesh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Majibur Rahman. The current Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, is the daughter of Sheikh Majibur Rahman. India also conferred Gandhi Peace Prize 2020 on Sheikh Rahman. India gifted 109 ambulances and 1.2 million doses of Covid shield to Bangladesh. The two countries also announced a new passenger train named Mitali Express that will run between Dhaka and New Jalpaiguri. The two-day successful visit concluded with India and Bangladesh signing five agreements in areas ranging from trade to disaster management. However, PM Modi's visit was also marked by violent protests in Dhaka, in which 12 people were killed. A hardline Islamist group, hifazat e islam is believed to be behind the violence. The next category is news from the field of business, economy and industrial sectors. The Parliament of India has passed a bill on 25th March to set up the National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development. The bill seeks to establish a new bank to support and fund long-term infrastructural projects in the country. It also aims to develop the bonds and derivative markets necessary for infrastructure financing. The National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development will be set up as a corporate body with authorized share capital of 1 lakh crore rupees. It will take projects in social sector infrastructure including health and education. The bank will raise money in the form of loans and by sale of various financing instruments including bonds and debentures. It may also borrow money from the central government, RBI, commercial banks, mutual funds and multilateral institutions such as World Bank and Asian Development Bank. Initially, the central government will own 100% shares of the new bank, which may subsequently be reduced up to 26%. The United States overtook Saudi Arabia to become the second biggest oil supplier to India in February 2021. India's imports from the United States increased by 48% to 5,45,300 barrels per day in February. This is 14% of India's overall import. In contrast, imports from Saudi Arabia fell by 42% in February to 4,45,200 barrels per day. Saudi Arabia, which has consistently become one of India's top suppliers, slipped to number 4 after Iraq, USA and Nigeria. This change in Indian import basket is a result of two factors. One is reduction in oil production by opaque countries and second is low crude oil demand in US economy. The US demand was weak and refineries were running at low rates. This is why US crude has to move to Asian region, which has been witnessing rapid demand recovery. China has not been taking US oil because of the trade problems, so India is the obvious choice. The next category is science and technology. The Indian Space Research Organization successfully deployed Sindhu Netra satellite on 1st March. The Sindhu Netra is a surveillance satellite developed by the Defence Research and Development Organization, DRDO. The satellite will give a major boost to India's surveillance capabilities to monitor the activities of both military warships as well as merchant navy ships. The satellite can also carry out surveillance in specific areas such as the South China Sea or the piracy-infested areas near African coast. Sindhu Netra is first in the series of satellites that would help in keeping a closer eye on the Chinese activities along the line of actual control. 
Sindhu Netra was launched using ISRO's PSLV C-51 rocket. Along with Sindhu Netra, ISRO also launched 18 other satellites including Brazil's Amazonia-1 as a part of the same launch. In a historic mission, Russia launched 38 satellites from 18 different countries into orbit on 22nd March. The launch used a Russia Soyuz 2.1 rocket. The launch was postponed twice earlier due to technical issues. The rocket contains satellites from countries like South Korea, Japan, Canada, Saudi Arabia, Germany, Italy and Brazil. It also contains Challenge 1, which is the first satellite made completely within Tunisia. This launch is to demonstrate Russian space capabilities. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, the Russian space sector has lagged behind international competitors. NASA's Curiosity rover, which landed on Mars in 2012, has relayed a spectacular video of clouds moving on the red planet. The footage was captured on 19th March using navigation cameras of the rover. As per the experts at the European Space Agency, the cloud formed on Mars are totally different from those on the Earth. The atmosphere on Earth consists mainly of oxygen and nitrogen, whereas Martian atmosphere is made up of 96% carbon dioxide. The atmosphere at Mars is very thin, making it difficult for clouds to form in the way they do on Earth. On Mars, the clouds formation is partly a result of the dust created when space debris hits the Martian atmosphere. The next category is Sports. C.A. Bhavani Devi has become the first Indian fencer in history to qualify for Olympics. Bhavani Devi is from Tamil Nadu. The daughter of a temple priest in Chennai, she battled societal pressure to reach the top of the game. Bhavani Devi picked up fencing in school and battled initial failure to win India's first international gold medal in the sport when she won gold in the Women's World Cup Satellite Tournament in 2017. In 2018, she won gold in the Commonwealth Championships the first Indian to do so in the tournament's 44-year history. Last year, she had spent the COVID-19 pandemic-enforced lockdown training indoors in Chennai. She is currently undergoing training for Tokyo Olympics with her coach in Italy. Mithali Raj has become the first Indian woman cricketer and the second in the world to score 10,000 runs in international cricket. Charlotte Edwards of England is the only other woman to have scored 10,000 international runs. Mithali Raj made her India debut in 1999. So far, she has played 10 tests, 212 one-day internationals and 90 T20 matches. In the end, let us look at some other miscellaneous news items. On 10th March, France conducted its first military exercise in space. The exercise was to test the ability to defend its satellites from an attack by a hostile power. Michael Fredling, the head of newly created Space Command of France, called it the first such exercise in Europe. The exercise stimulated the monitoring of a potentially dangerous space object as well as a threat to a satellite. The US Space Force and German Space Agency also participated in the exercise. The Indian Railways has announced an integrated helpline number for all types of queries and complaints. The new Rail Mother number 139 will integrate all railway helplines into single number for quick grievance redressal and enquiry during the journey. Other railway helpline numbers were discontinued after this. The helpline 139 will be available in 12 languages. With this, we have come to the end of this video. We hope you like the coverage of topics in our monthly GK capsules. Do also watch our other videos. Happy learning! Thank you!